Internet Protocol version six. When you use the internet, you must take advantage of this technology. You have no choice. IP stands for Internet Protocol, and it usually describes the details that are required to facilitate connections and communications between your computer, your phone, and the rest of the internet. A lot of the details that come down between IPv4 and IPv6 are the length of the address. And that's critical as we have so many devices online these days, we need to be able to have a dedicated address to connect to each of those devices. Now, of course, things like your home Wi-Fi and your routers will use NAT to be able to do lookup tables to connect out to the internet and the, each device on your home network will have its own private address and they will share one WAN address. And this was the main reasoning behind why IPv4 is only a 32-bit address number because there's more than enough, right? We have 4.3 billion IP address possibilities with IPv4. However, we thought that wasn't enough. So we took that 32-bit address number and then added a whole bunch of more numbers. <laughs> we had so many. We, well, we turned 32 bits to 128, which brings this number of possible addresses to some number I have, I can't, I don't know how to even say that number out, so many. Now that definitely means that every device, every IoT device, little mini device over here, everything can have its own dedicated IP address going forward. As we're communicating with devices over IPv6 or IPv4, we kind of want to take a look and see what are the differences between version six and version four. There are actually quite a few differences. Overall, the ethernet framework format and the headers are generally the same. However, there's some improvements with version six. Taking a look at the basics with IPv4, we see that the address number is gonna be a 32-bit number divided into four octets. They could just say bytes. Octet means eight, right? So eight bits, and there's eight bits per byte. So they could have just said four bytes here. And the total address space is 43 billion possible IP addresses. Now, a lot of those are separated into classes because there's a finite number of those IP addresses. So we wanna reserve a few of them, a variety of classes class identifications based on the octet and the position of the total value of the IP address itself. For example, on Wikipedia, we see here a reserved address block space, a special address blocks. So if the IP address starts with zero, this is mostly related to local network. Same with 10, 100, and 127. We also see that with 172, 192, and this list goes on for a bit. They have a variety of reserved addresses for very specific purposes because we have a finite number. Now, yes, even with IP v6 there is a number there that you can see and it is finite though zooming in here it is <laughs> It's a very generous amount of finite numbers that we have. With IPv6, there are noteworthy differences when we were comparing it to IPv4. Let's take a quick look here to see what the differences are. And we see with IPv6 compared to four, yes, the version protocol is six. Wait, what happened to version five? Hold on a second. Why did we go to four to, wait, I need to, we need to know about this. Hold on one second. Okay, so there was an IPv5 and it was built specifically to stream audio and video. IPv5 was called the internet stream protocol. Very likely because of this narrow use case, the reason that it was never adopted is because a large amount of the internet, even though a lot of it is video streaming, we use it for other things like uh, reading documents. <laughs> and sending messages. So now we have version six, which is represented with the address of 128 bit long hexadecimal format typically represented because if we tried to do that in decimal, it would look a, a lot. It would just be a lot to really look at. With version four, it had, we didn't really have a problem having it done in decimal. We divide it from four octets, we're up to eight octets. <laughs> and that's, that is, Okay, so we can say it like this, 340 trillion, trillion, trillion. <laughs> That's how many. Here's an example of one address right here. It's a lot. That's a, a very big number. Even though we still use IPv4 today for uh, the majority of the internet, IPv6 has come in as a much improved solution that will actually help reduce energy and increase efficiency on the internet. A large amount of the shortcomings of IPv4 are due to the limited space that it has a number of addresses. But we've got around it. We had invented technology such as lookup tables, a NAT, which is NAT, 
the network translation allows us to keep track of one address and translate it to another. Usually this runs on your router and your home Wi-Fi, so you can share one WAN IP address with the world across all the devices in your home. So you have your TV, you've got your phones, you've got your laptops. Each of those devices has a private IP on your local network. However, they share one WAN IP where the rest of the world can communicate with you. The network address translation layer allows, it makes it possible. And a fantastic thing about IP version six, guess what? We don't need a NAT anymore. There are some advantages of NAT. However, you just don't need it. It's just IPv6, there's 340 trillion, trillion, trillion addresses. <laughs> We don't need uh, a NAT anymore. This is fantastic because NAT does require additional memory. It requires translations of the packets. This takes energy. Quite a bit of energy is about three times more energy as you transit one packet. Your laptop will generate a packet or your phone. That hits your home router. Your router will need to translate that packet into the lookup table so that it replaces your, your local LAN address with the WAN address assigned to the gateway packet will go out into the internet and then it zooms back and it hits your router again and then it uses the NAT it uses a lookup table to then retranslate that to your local address so it has to do that translation twice and your own laptop had to generate it once three generations of packets and we can bring that all the way down to one which is a huge improvement IPv6 has been around for quite a while actually since 1999 and that is when the matrix came out remember that movie I mean this is a good movie it's a good this new version of the internet protocol came with it a whole bunch of improvements and there's so many possible addresses truly going forward every device can have its own WAN address and there are differences in the Ethernet frames as we are generating packets every packet has an assigned header that goes along with identifying where it came from and where it's headed to which actually isn't much different than how we do envelopes in the mail system you have a destination address that you write on the envelope and then you also have a return address at the top every single packet it has this inside of it as it's transiting the internet. Taking a look here, we do have a notable difference in the total header size IPv4 versus IPv6. The one main noted difference here is that the source and destination address take up a lot more of the header. Overall, the IPv6 header is double compared to IPv4. We've got 20 bytes here compared to the 40 bytes in the IPv6 header. We can also see here in this diagram, all of the, the red marked boxes are no longer included in IPv6. As these features were a possibility in IPv4, majority of them were never really used because you uh, typically might implement a lot of those things at the application layer or at the transport protocol layer, like TCP and UDP, we usually take care of a lot of those scenarios. So IPv6 is simplified and really all we need to have is the source and destination address. For future proofing and other details, we do want to have a version and we still need to know how big the payload is going to be in that ethernet frame. So something that we don't see here on this chart is what happens below the source and destination address is gonna be the actual data that's included, which is sort of the primary cargo, where the header is gonna be a box that surrounds the cargo, which is really the part that you care about the most because that's the, the bits and bytes that are associated with the video that you're currently watching or the JSON payloads that are coming in from API providers to send and receive messages. Things like chat and direct messages and the typing indicator, all of those things are ethernet frames that all have their own assigned IPv4 or IPv6 header. As we're talking about IPv6, we see a lot of advantages and benefits of IPv6. My favorite one is now we don't need to have an additional lookup table that translates local addresses to WAN addresses because every device now can have its own IP address because there's so many. How many addresses? This many, there's so many. You know, you, you look, just looking at this number, it's basically impossible really to say what that number is, but you can say it is 340 trillion, trillion, trillion. So let's take a quick look at one of the benefits of using IPv6 here. We actually have several. A lot of the limitations of IPv4 required additional technologies that surround it to enable it to proceed forward into the evolving internet scape with so many devices and ways to communicate. IPv6 has a more efficient routing without the need for fragmenting packets. Aha, this is because IPv6 fragments and other reassembly are handled directly by the sender and receiver and not the routers in the path. So that means the routers 
workers don't have to do less work, which, you know, they generally have a lot to do. They're heavy lifting all these packets around the internet. They don't have to do any assembly or reassembly. That dramatically improves the internet speed and our capabilities going forward. There's a built-in quality of service that distinguishes delay sensitive packets. I mean, why don't, why, if it's your quality of service and it's a setting like say one to 10, we'll always set it to 10, right? Because it's always sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I have the highest possible quality of service. This is most likely just in in terms of the QoS feature of IPv6 looks like it's more implemented on the implementation side of the application or the host, the local host, the, the network that you own yourself. This allows you to have better control over those devices as packets are flowing. You can take advantage of header details. I uh, see here, okay, here we go. So we've got a traffic class flow label. These are segments of the IPv6 header that allow various software and hardware routers to pay attention to these kinds of settings. And they can make different decisions based on the values that are present in them. In the case where we're doing a video conferencing system and we are streaming audio and video, typically video can be deprioritized as audio is the most critical to relaying information. Here's my favorite one, check this out elimination of NAT to extend the address space. We don't need it anymore because now the address space is so large that the NAT table that you just don't need one. And that is a dramatic improvement on cost efficiency, energy reduction, because we don't have to regenerate every packet every single time for all the scenarios. Security is critical on the internet and we do see that IPv6 also includes additional header information that allows authentication and key exchange. This allows us to implement security at a lower level in IP layer, which is layer three. That's critical from a security perspective Perspective, because guess what? When you're generating a packet, whether it's IPv4 or IPv6, you can put whatever you want in that packet. Here's the example of that packet. You can put any data that you want into this ethernet frame and throw it out over to the internet. The internet will follow the instructions and the details of the address. In general, you can call this a security vulnerability because you can have, you can invoke any device to communicate with another device unsolicited. And there's a couple other benefits in here. The stateless address auto configuration for easier network administration because there's so many addresses. If you just pick one and you go. And this improved header structure requires less processing. So even more efficiency on the compute side. How popular is IPv6 compared to IPv4? Well, it turns out IPv6 is used a lot more than we might think and it's continually, it's going up, check it out. So we see here, nice chart that describes details about uh, about almost three, two years ago. Okay, three years ago, August 17, 2020. But we see about uh, 32, 30%. This chart is specifically showing the percentage of users that access Google over IPv6, so probably Google search, and seeing the devices that access Google search. That means that a wide, vast majority, which is IPv4, kind of still accessing the, the internet, which is fine. The good news is that we're seeing a nice uptrend in IPv6 adoption. And taking a quick look here, we see that the adoption by country, uh, the, the uh, regions that are, are more filled in green, that green is going to be where more adoption of IPv6 occurs. India is huge. That makes sense in India. They're the largest population and they have a lot of devices. So they would need IPv6 a lot sooner than everywhere else. We see as well, USA is in here uh, in the top. And then zooming in here, Europe, we have Germany and France. Nothing from Italy. I guess Italy doesn't care that much about IPv6. See Italy right here. And Greece, I would, <laughs> that's interesting. All right, I wasn't expecting, I get that, wasn't expecting that as well to be IPv6. And we have more in Finland, Norway, Norway and the UK. Also worth noting over here in Asia, we do see more adoption as well as we've got uh, Japan. Also we have uh, Vietnam, a little bit in Thailand and Malaysia. And I'm definitely cheating looking at the map so you might have thought that I was uh, very confident in my geography of the map. <laughs> so it's great to see this adoption of IPv6. You can start using IPv6 fairly straightforwardly. You just have to start with knowing the source and destination addresses. You can get the destination address usually in DNS and it's a special DNS query called a quad A record load. Up. Yes, that means there's four A's. I've got this set up for us to try out. You can easily do this from a command line terminal using the dig command. You'll say dig AAA, and then you'll type in your address that will return IPv6 addresses. And I've got one for us here, pubnub3.com. Here we go, check it out. We have a list of IPv6 addresses and they are much bigger. And if you wanna construct an ethernet frame, 
all you have to do is take this destination address as we're constructing the header for IPv6. Here's at the at the bottom here, this is where the destination address goes. The source address, that's going to be your system. As long as your network and ISP support IPv6, you simply plug your device's IPv6 into the source address. And now you can communicate over the internet using IPv6. Of course, just for comparison, let's take a look and see what it looks like with IPv4 on a DNS lookup. We see that it is much smaller addresses. Let's do a side-by-side -side comparison really quick. So we'll do a DNS lookup for the traditional IPv6 addresses, single A, and then we do a quad A lookup address over here, and you can see <laughs> A little bit of difference in the, the total number of digits, which means the total addressable space of IPv6 is massive. It's so vast that every device could practically pick its own randomly generated address and then just use that going forward. That's a lot. I mean, basically you could do as many devices as you, as you want. Even if you tried to assign one address to every single one of your devices and you just kept going from there, you, would, you wouldn't run out. And if you tried to assign uh, as many addresses as you could to a single device, you probably wouldn't be able to in your lifetime that the number of addresses are so vast that even a very fast computer trying to assign a large number of addresses will have trouble being able to even accomplish that.